Today, we talk about symbolic links, what they are, how they will benefit your handheld computers and how to use them on Windows. Clean yourself and get ready! Pretty much everyone who uses Windows knows those shortcuts which are being created on the desktop once a program gets installed. To create one yourself, you right click on a file and select create a shortcut. Once you do that, you can move the shortcut to a different location and open it through the explorer just as if you had moved the original file, right? Wrong. A shortcut is something that is specifically used by the Windows Explorer. It has some advantages like being able to assign a custom icon to it and to add custom command line parameters. If you don't know what this is, don't worry about it, we don't need that here. If we check the behavior of a shortcut, it seems like it can do everything a regular file can do. I can create a shortcut to a file and a shortcut to a folder. When we use Notepad, we can open the shortcut and we can enter the folder and open the file inside. So why do we need a symbolic link? Because symbolic links work on a deeper level and are done via the file system itself. That means that they are transparent to any program and act exactly like the file or folder itself. Symlinks are done on a file system level and transparent to other programs, shortcuts are not. What that means is that only symlinks behave exactly as if the actual file or folder was there, shortcuts do not. In the next section I will demonstrate how to create symlink and show an example of when a shortcut does not work but a symlink does. Unfortunately, you need an external program to use symbolic links on Windows as they are not as common there as they are on Linux. The program we need is called Link Shell Extension. It is a free program and can easily be used via the right click menu. I will leave a link to the download in the description. Once you have downloaded and installed the program, some more options will appear in your right click menu. Let's start with a simple example. Here we have our file and folder. To create a symbolic link, select the file, right click and select pick link source. Next we choose a destination, right click, drop as symbolic link. You can do the same with the folder. First pick link source, then right click, drop as symbolic link. As you can see, you can open the source file and enter the source directory. So for the moment it seems like they are pretty much the same as shortcuts. Now let's see an example of when you need symbolic links. Here we have Retrobot, a front end mainly for emulation. It's quite empty right now. That is because the ROMs need to be in a specific location. My ROMs however are on an external SD card and I do not want to copy them over. Let's try shortcuts. Right click, create shortcut, cut them and move them over into the ROMs folder. Let's now start Retrobot and check the result. Nothing. Ok, let's delete the shortcuts and let's try symlinks. Select all, right click, pick link source. Go to ROMs, right click, drop as symbolic links. Start Retrobot and Voila, here are my systems and ROMs. And that is the beauty of symlinks. And they behave exactly the same as if the actual file was there. This works well with hot plugging and I can remove or insert the SD card at any time and the files will appear once the drive is mounted. 
To demonstrate the difference, let's pick one of the folders and create a shortcut and a symlink. Open both and check the path. As you can see, the shortcut leads us to the destination. The symlink puts the file in place as if it was actually on the desktop. Maybe those examples are not something which is useful for you right now. However, once you realize that you can make one file or folder to appear in different places at the same time, this will open up many possibilities and probably save you from a headache or two. Short side note, if by accident you picked the wrong link source, you cannot pick another. To do so, right click anywhere and select Cancel Link Creation. Now you can pick a new source. And that is pretty much it. It is super simple to use and very useful once you need to have one file to be accessible from different locations. It will behave exactly the same as the original file does and can be used as such by any programs. As that is all you need to know to create and use symbolic links, I will not go any deeper into the inner workings and what happens behind the scenes. The website of Link Shell Extensions explains it all in an understandable way. Visit it if you want to learn more about symbolic links, junctions, hard links and what else there is to it. If that was useful for you, encourage me to keep this channel alive by leaving a like and a subscription. Good night and bye bye. See you next time.